this guy. This guy is ripping me off. <laughs> He's locked out on the flesh trade. Locked out on redstone. Locked out on glowstone. I have never had it where it's, it's locked out on lapis afterwards. Let's see if today is the day. It's looking good. Nope. Fre refreshed. All right. We're back in business here. Yeah, so welcome back, guys, to another episode of the Let's Play series. If you haven't heard something pretty exciting, Minecraft 1.11.1, <laughs> four ones, is, uh, is out now. And they released a snapshot the other day with a bunch of bug fixes, and I thought it was for 1.12. I thought it was the first snapshot. But uh, no, it's actually released already. And in it, they've... They've introduced a new type of flying using fireworks. It's pretty cool. We're going to check that out later. But uh, before we do, <laughs> they have also nerfed bows. You can no, no longer combine mending with infinity. So I'm going to try stock up on a few of them uh, before I update here. All right, guys. So let's do this. We got 130 levels to spend here. <laughs> it's going to be the biggest enchanting spree I have ever done. Whenever I get over 100 levels, you know what I do? I save them. I want to see how how many levels I can get, right? And then I always just die. <laughs> and I lose everything. And then afterwards, it's like, why did I do that? Why didn't I just spend them? What was the point of that? It didn't make me feel good when I lost them all. It just made me feel bad. So this, this is the first time I'm actually going to spend them when I get over 100. And oh my goodness, we're getting tons of bows here. So what we're looking for is punch two bows, or anything with unbreaking on, or or things like that. Something I can just add mending to, hopefully. Oh yeah. So I think that's uh, 34 bows we got from this enchanting spree. And let's just take a look, quick look through them. Anything with infinity or punch two, unbreaking three, that's a great one. I don't have to do too much to that to turn it into... This is what I want, ideally. Punch 2, Infinity, Mending, Unbreaking 3. Uh, if it has power on, <laughs> no. Can't use that for flying. Uh, like this one, for example. That's great, except for the power 4. Oh, wow, look at that. I should probably also make a like a good Wither Fighting Bow. Or a few of them, if I can. So, yeah. Let's just take a quick look through here. My concern is, like... They nerfed the bows. Uh, people probably won't be flying with bows anymore because the fireworks are way better for flying. But they might decide that, hey, we got to nerf this as well. <laughs> and if they do that, they'll have nerfed the bows and the fireworks. And then, you know, people might get sad. So I want to make sure I at least have the bows just in case the fireworks get super nerfed. Uh, okay, so I got a few things to show you here today, guys. I've done a lot of work in the world off camera here. Uh, I've been trying to get done some of the boring jobs I didn't really want to do or show too much on camera. And one of them here is the tree farm. So this is what it looks like with no trees in here. <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Uh, for the longest time, I wanted to finish the roof in here. So we had like a section of about like that done. Uh, and I wanted to copy this pattern over to the rest of it, and I finally did it. And I think it looks pretty cool, right? I tried to do it as random as I could, and I really like that pattern. I might do it more in the future. Before, it was just these little squares throughout, and it looked very uh, plain and symmetrical. But now it's kind of crazy and cool. Um, you don't notice it too much when the trees are in here, but yeah wanted to get that done. I also added a, a thing of dark oak all around here as a kind of a separator. Now we got to finish up the walls in here. That's the only thing. I'm not sure what to do with them. I might try to make like a giant mural all around of some sorts. Could be cool. This is like the oldest part of the man cave if you didn't know. So it's it looks really bad. <laughs> so this is this helps it out a little bit. I can't change too much without like wrecking history, you know. So I'm just doing what I can. Hopefully I come up with something cool for the walls. But even if I have an amazing roof and amazing walls, just because the floor is so ugly, it's not going to be a great room. <laughs> no matter what I do. Oh yeah, and I want to show you guys uh, the nether wart farm too, before we uh, run off here. When I was building this, I can't remember if I tried it, but I, I changed this over to path blocks instead of the grass. It's much better, right? 
I think that's what we should do. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get rid of the grass here, switch it over. It's it it doesn't uh, stand out quite as much that way. It's more within line of the colors we've used. Yeah, there we go. That's a lot better, I think. We'll we'll go with that for now. Also, let's try to change out the glass here. Since we got rid of the green the green grass, let's change the green glass. We'll we'll turn it either yellow or orange. Probably look good. Um yellow versus orange. I'm thinking orange is going to be the one cuz we have all these magma blocks, right? Yep, that's right. You're never wrong. <laughs> So guys, something else I did here today is I finished fixing the zombie pavement farm. <laughs> it's working again. It's wonderful. I figured uh, we've spent so much time building, testing, fixing this farm already. You guys are probably getting a little bit bored of it, right? So uh, did it off camera here. And no joke, spent over eight hours on this today. Eight hours hours fixing this farm on top of what we did before <laughs> because uh, the piston translocation was was removed from the game so we had to redo a lot of the functional parts of the farm and it took eight hours I don't know why it took so long but it did um, yeah so now here's how it's working we have the XP coming up to us in the middle here stand on a trap door and you can pick it up through it and I guess let's hop down below. You see that we have, whoa, totally missed everything. <laughs> let's go back up. Now it's not perfect. You see all the XP on the on the ice here? Might do something about that still. Uh, it's because it's shooting the zombie pigmen with the slime launchers before everything settles, I believe. And when it does that, the XP doesn't always travel the same distance. So you gotta let the XP settle before you push it. You see how it pushes it like that? Right to the middle? Usually it's fine, but over time, a lot of it does end up on the ice here. But uh, I'm okay with that. <laughs> and then the rest of it, it goes up like that. We got two launchers on the way. Um, you see there's no wires connected to them. They're, they're independent from things. And there's a lot of items here, you can see that. It's just because the hoppers aren't fast enough to pick up all the items. Um, another issue with it, but I'm fine with it. Because <laughs> uh, to get around that, we have to have two filters, double the filters, and the farm's going to get way bigger. And there's not that many items there compared to what we're getting, I think. Anyways, ramble, ramble. So uh, over here is where the item filter is, up over there. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll settle down and just take a look at it real quick here. So the items funnel down from these hopper minecarts. There's two hopper minecarts in, like together in each of these things because they fill up so quickly when the items go by. They funnel down here. We got our item filters. The items pass through along here. Anything that doesn't get filtered out goes over there and gets shot out. Um, like all the golden swords and stuff. Everything else goes to these droppers here. You see we got gold nuggets falling down here after they've been sorted. Falls down the tubes. Tubes don't need to be that, like, all the way to the ground, but I did it anyways. This is all the gold swords and the garbage. For some reason, I think just because item filters aren't fast enough, the hoppers aren't, aren't quick enough, some zombie flesh is getting mixed in here. But again, not a big deal, as long as we're eating the gold. And then it gets sorted into our shulker box system here. And when they fill up, they go up in these chests here. So every three of these uh, shulker boxes is, I think, one stack of gold blocks. So we have like two stacks of gold blocks in here. So that's pretty cool. Plus we have these. And zombie flesh, we can trade for emeralds pretty easily. But we're going to move on here, guys. There is an idea I really want to try out today. <laughs> I had this stupid idea for a tree farm, a dark oak tree farm. And if we if we do build this, if it works out, we're going to build it uh, probably over here at the blaze farm area. Um, it 
it was a stupid idea, but I tried it out for a little bit, and it seems like there might actually be something to it. So we're going to investigate and get some actual numbers here, because I haven't figured out the numbers to this just yet. Uh, but what we're going to do is set up some dirt. It's got to be a 2x2 two two with the dark oak trees. Uh, if you don't know, these are one of the hardest trees to farm in the game, because they, they have to be 2x2. Two they grow branches and stuff, so it makes it, like, uh, all crazy shaped. <laughs> and then also, actually, let's do it like this. I'm just going to set it up like this and then remove some of these hoppers, I think. And also, they seem to have the worst sapling droppage of all the trees in the game. Like, you have to pretty much break every leaf on the tree to get your saplings back. You might get a, a few extra, but it's pretty brutal. Let's put these back. Okay, so here's the plan. I'm going to drop off anything important I have on me that I don't necessarily need right now. <laughs> so my punch bow. Don't really need my picks and my shovel and the sword. We do need the axe, though. Uh, we have our hopper net set up, so any saplings and logs that drop should get picked up by that. And the idea is we're going to use beds. We're going to sleep our trees away, is the plan. All the drops should end up in this hopper right there. That's where I got them all pointing. And I think we're about ready here. <laughs> Hopefully we have enough headroom. Uh, if not, it's about to get bigger. So we grow the tree. Oh, come on. Oh, we might need more headspace. Darn it. How, how many is that? One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven. All right, I'll, I'll remove some more blocks. That should be good now. So we grow our tree, please. Yes, right away, good. We grow our tree and then uh, this is kind of a semi-automatic way of doing it. Um, these hoppers have two functions. They collect our saplings and our wood. They also prevent fire, which is important here because we're gonna be blowing up the tree with beds in the nether. Now, if you don't know, beds have a special thing that if you, well, any explosion, if you're out of the line of the sight of the explosion, uh, it doesn't really damage you. So I'm going to stand here. And that didn't work at all. <laughs> what? Oh, no. And there we go, guys. So that's how you destroy two stacks of iron in less than a second. <laughs> I've lowered the hoppers by three blocks, covered them over with slabs just in case. Uh, hopefully they're far enough away now. So we got 27 saplings. Let's put our dark oak in the chest here. This chest is empty. Okay. So we got to do this in two steps. Two beds per tree. Grow another tree. I made this room a little bit bigger again. So two blocks up is where we put the first bed always. And I've tried this a few times. It never destroys the dirt below that I, I've had happen anyways. Oh, see, this is why I didn't want to put these here. <laughs> what else could I use instead of obsidian? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, and we lost the slab. Uh-oh. Okay. How we doing right now? So we got six and three. So we're getting our saplings back, right? And look at all the leaves up there still. Then you would have to do the rest of the tree with another bed and hopefully have some way of like getting up here. Actually, there's not much left to this tree. Sometimes they're a little bit bigger than others. Okay, I should probably grab my shovel. Where's my shovel? Oh, <laughs> it was purple. I couldn't see it. It blended in too well. Okay. And then to get the second bed, somehow have a way of placing it up there. I haven't figured out how to do that yet. Jump in and then activate it. And that's the whole tree. So from that one tree, we have six on us. It's only 12 logs, four saplings. Hmm. Okay, so that is not looking too good, to be honest. I was hoping for better numbers, but we'll try a couple more trees. We could use ender chests instead of obsidian, I just realized. So these would be blast-proof, but they won't catch on fire. So that that's an idea. <laughs> if this is 
If there's any merit to this, this is I'll use ender chests. This is the plan. Let's let's try a few more though, just to see what happens. Some trees are taller than others. Sometimes the explosion does more damage. So let's just double check. Okay, first blast. Lost the slab there. Um, so we'd probably want some sort of piston device to bring us to the top of tr the tree and drop down on it like this. Oh, <laughs> not like that. I just slipped off the edge. Yeah, like land on the top of the tree, break a few leaf blocks, place the other bed, dig down. It's not really... There's a lot to it, isn't there? Can I reach that from now? From here. From now. <laughs> okay, a bunch of stuff fell down. Let's check our, our chest. Again, very bad returns. We got the saplings back, but only six logs, plus the two we, d we did ourselves. So yeah, it's not it's not a good idea. Let's scrap it. Yeah, so that was a that was a bust, guys. Sometimes that happens. My ideas don't pan out, and rather than cutting it from the video, I thought I'd show you the experience, anyways. Uh, so we're gonna move on to one more project. Also, I added some leaves up there. Huh? Huh? A little bit better, right? I think so. One more pr quick project here, and then we'll check out the the new release and the features with it. Uh, over here, this is what we call the Musical Mushroom Farm, and it's done. It's been finished for a long time, except for the musical part of it. <laughs> uh, when you grow the tree, it's supposed to play a, a musical note. That's what it does right now. It's off tune and, and stuff. You guys were supposed to help me with it. I asked you for, for tunes, and I, did, I didn't get any. So it's been sitting here. <laughs> uh, but I've gotten a little bit better with note blocks. Okay, I, I understand a few more things about music now. And I came up with my own tune. So let's let's get to that. I built it in creative already, so I'm just going to copy it over. And when I say built it in creative already, some people are confused about that. I don't use creative in this world. It's in another world that I built it, and i got to copy it over from that world to here is is what I mean. <laughs> so, let's get rid of these. Underneath here is where we'll put the, the thingy, and then I'll show you the tunings and stuff to it uh, once I get it set up here. So I'm going to go down maybe um, probably two blocks or so and build it here. Alright guys, very cool, very cool. So I got it all set up here and tuned. Throughout my whole time playing Minecraft, I've only tried... Uh, turning two songs into note blocks. I'm going to do it more from now on because I, I kind of got the hang of it now. Uh, I did the cave story main theme way back in the old world. <laughs> and now I've done time lapse from the fat rat. So here it is. Aha. Pretty cool, right? And I got a special circuit here, so it kind of reuses some of the note blocks because at the end of the tune, only uh, either splits this way to these two notes, or else it splits this way to these two notes. So rather than doubling the size of all of this, we have a special T flip flop here, which alternates the output every time it activates. So it changes from locking that repeater to locking that one uh, as it goes through the thing. You see that one's locked. Now that one's locked. Pretty cool, right? And we could we could keep it going on a loop if we wanted to. So whenever a mushroom grows, we want to connect it to the circuit. Whenever the bud switch on the mushroom grower activates, connect it right over here, and that's all we got to do. All all eight of the mushrooms will share the same uh, tune here. Oh yeah, and here's the tuning. So the first we have a group, thirteen twenty. This is the number of clicks to to tune the note block. Then we have eighteen, sixteen, eighteen, sixteen, thirteen. 11, 13, 13, uh, 11, 13, and then at the split here, at first it goes this way, 16, 13, and then it goes this way, 11, 8. <laughs> 16 emeralds, ah. Huh? 
Very cool. So we're going to finish up our episode today checking out the new update. So we're in 1.11.1, trying out the new uh, the flying <laughs> with the fireworks. Before I updated, though, I did get the bows done. So we got a few flying bows here. And we also got a few combat bows. They're not finished, but uh, I think we can still work on them after afterwards, hopefully, without it breaking. So this is the last time I'm going to be able to combine infinity with mending. Infinity doesn't last. <laughs> right? Uh-huh. You can still add infinity, but not with mending. Anyways. So let's uh, let's go above ground, I guess. I got a few fireworks here from the firework room. They have stars on them. I think they should still explode when you're using them for flight. That might look cool. And we'll also try it out this way. All right. Oh, yeah, and you get three. That's right. Oh, that's actually not a bad deal, then. Um, let's deposit some of these. I wanted to try out the ones with more gunpowder. I heard they make you fly longer. I don't think they're faster, though. I could be wrong. Actually, let's split it then. Yeah. Okay. So we got some longer duration ones. Oh, it says flight duration on it. Oh, that's cool. So it actually takes that into consideration. All right. Well, <laughs> I didn't try out the snapshot, so this is my first time flying this way. I've just seen some videos of it. Let's grab our duration ones. And I think you can just fly by jumping, right? You don't need the launchers. Yeah, look at that. Oh, man, that is fast. How long does that last for? Let's look, let's go into this view. Okay, so that's like one second, right? Let's try out the the threes. Yeah, that's like three seconds. I, I think that's what it means. One, two, or three seconds. Okay. Let's try out one with a star. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, and they damage you, too. I forgot about that. So maybe... Man, this is crazy. Why is it damaging me, like, when I'm far away from the firework? Because I'm launching this. I'm launching these. And they should be far away from me, right? Like, it's, it's way back there. I'm still getting blasted, though. Huh. <laughs> All right. Let's also try, uh, let's try swimming. I've heard you can go super fast in water. Oh. Ah, I messed it up. Darn it. And you can probably combine the flight bow with the fireworks, right? That's the other thing. Oh, yeah, look at this. Oh, snap. <laughs> that is so crazy. Oh, but if you touch the ground, that's it. You gotta like, jump off of the lily pad then. <laughs> Dude. Now I kind of want to make a water base. If you can do that, that is pretty sick. You can fly straight up, right? Yeah, we're going straight up. Oh, you can hear the wind stop when the, the firework runs out, too. Dude, this is, a, this is a game changer for sure. I'm lost. I haven't been paying attention to where I'm going. <laughs> uh, what else can we do? Yeah, let's try it out with the punch bow. Because you can get the boost effect while getting the bow effect. Because it kind of lasts for a few seconds, right? Ah, uh, it's not really... Nah, it's not really doing anything. It's not like you go supersonic or anything. Okay. Okay, I just realized something. You can do stuff you, you can't do with the punch bow with this, because the flight is, like, constant, right? So you can do, like, loopity loops almost. <laughs> oh! Wait a second. Like, you would never be able to do that with a punch bow. That would be so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to convert over to using these. I wasn't sure, but after after trying it, for sure. Definitely tops the bow. And uh, let's just double check something here. I'm pretty sure Frostwalker only works when you're walking. But just in case it works when you're flying, that would be pretty crazy. Aha. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay, here we go. Nope, no ice trail. 
Well, I think we're going to call it here for today, guys. Had a lot of fun, though. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we got our comment of the day picked out. <laughs> it says, Do those sand launchers still work? Those are... He means the the launchers in Sandy City here. So we, we built these a while ago. It was like a worm that like hopped from one launcher to the next. Uh, unfortunately, though, these did break. I don't know exactly why. Like that one's just shooting the sand straight up. I tried uh, tried fixing them. I think I had to remove some of these blocks was, was the trick. But even after doing that, um, guess what happens? It, the sand doesn't launch the same anymore. Yeah, there it goes. You see it broke? So that that kind of sucks. Before it would it would fall down, land, and then jump to the next one. So yeah. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. We'll play around with these new features more in the next episode. I got some plans. And uh, until then, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye. Ouch. <laughs> oh, you can keep going even if you crash. Oh, that's amazing.